So then, um, assuming, and I think rightfully so, that Caleb Williams goes to Chicago, yeah. when you're talking about scheme fits and you're talking about uh, the proper fits for the traits that you see on tape from college, which quarterback that's still available, minus Caleb Williams, do you think best fits Cliff Kingsbury's system and the Washington Commanders roster as we currently know it? Which one do you think is the best well, fit there? Greg. I mean, Drake Mays played in that system because two years ago in North Carolina, Phil Longo, who runs an air raid system, who was the North Carolina offensive coordinator two years ago, when many believed that Drake May had a better season than he did this past year, he's been in that system. So he understands it. He knows the methodology. He knows how it's taught. He knows the concepts. So he, he would probably not have a, a, a problem really stepping right in and understanding at least what he's asked to do that doesn't mean you execute it at a high level sure. it's obviously a different level of football um i would think Jaden daniels could execute that system effectively um you know certainly there's a run element that Jaden daniels gives you although he's he's not just a runner some might think he is because he's so dynamic but he stays in the pocket the running is, is his parachute it's the last thing he looks to do um but you know, I think that both those guys in an ideal world would fit. I think both of them will have um, s some learning to do because the game will be different. The game will be faster. Um, so uh, and, and that's the thing. You know, you never know exactly how long the learning curve takes. The one thing about the air raid offense um, is these guys aren't really taught much about defenses. And one advantage Drake May had this past season in North Carolina is Clyde Christensen was there essentially coaching him. And as you know, Clyde Christensen coached in the NFL for a long time. Mm -hmm. He coached Andrew Luck. He coached Tom Brady. He coached Peyton Manning. So I guarantee Drake May, and he's got some issues he has to work out as well, by the way, but Drake May probably has a better understanding of the process of how to go about playing the position. Because it all starts, Rich, with the process. Yeah, and then the consensus that I've heard, too, from a lot of evaluators, Greg, is that May needs maybe more time to sit if you have the luxury and can afford that sort of thing. Um, I don't know if you already gave me the uh, the sort of head nod in a, in a way that thinks that, that, that that's not a certainty. But my question for you, then, is which one do you think that you've seen out of all the quarterbacks available is most pro-ready, that can step in based on the processing, based on the knowledge, based on you know, what you've seen on tape, Greg? Well, I'll answer it this way. Sure. I think that no one is theoretically pro-ready because the, the environment and the game is different. So I think when you talk to coaches, which I do a lot of at the Combine, as you know, you know, I get to see you there on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things they always talk about is you sort of have to tailor what you do to what their strengths are, especially if they have to play early. So it's not so much being pro ready, it's taking what you believe they do really, really well and tailoring some of what you do offensively with your pass game to what they do so they're comfortable because they've got to play and, and you want them to have some success. Now, do some quarterbacks come in and have great success? Yes, look at what C.J. Stroud did and now everybody thinks that, hey, every quarterback who's drafted high is going to come in and be C.J. Stroud. It's, it's like with, when coaches go from worst to first, every owner thinks that that's going to happen all the time. You know, so you have to be a little careful with that, but you tailor what you think they do best. So in other words, if a quarterback is mobile, you'd like to be in a situation where the, the quarterback run game is a factor, where the quarterback boot action pass game is a factor. You try to give him things that he's comfortable with and that help him see things clearly. The key thing is for the quarterback to see things clearly in a very short amount of time, Rich. So which one do you think has that skill set? Who? Yeah, that's a hard question. I mean, well, I only ask it, those, Greg. I only now it comes them. down to how you structure your offense. I mean, you know, you could look at someone like Bo Nix, who's not going to be drafted in the top five. But Bo Nix played in a system that really defined things beautifully for him. He was a brilliant executor and ball distributor. Um, you know, I, I would bet that there are some coaches that look at Bo Nix and think that, hey, I have a system that is really effective. He can execute it at a pretty high level right now. Um, he's not as gifted a passer as some of the other guys. He doesn't have as big an arm. He's not a power thrower. You don't have to be a power thrower. Joe Burrow is certainly not a power thrower. And and I hope people understand I'm not making a direct comparison between Bo Nix and Joe Burrow. But, you know, arm strength is, is a relative term. Some people it's really important. Some people it's not. Think of it this way, Rich. 
if you talk to 15 different coordinators or, or quarterback coaches, they'll probably have the same 15 traits on their list of what's important, but it's the value they ascribe to specific traits. Some might ascribe higher value to a specific trait, others not so much. You know, it all depends on what value you ascribe based on how you see the game as a coach. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.